Hey, it's Kevin from KUKA, and I want to tell you guys yet another what I think is a fascinating story during my younger days when I was doing my apprenticeship in Vancouver. So, the apprenticeship is when you're kind of like a little baby puppy and you're learning how to cook with somebody who really understands all the little details and structure and he kind of becomes your master. So I was doing my apprenticeship in Vancouver at a beautiful hotel and every year uh, there's this giant stadium where we host all of our football and our baseball and our basketball and they do a culinary week. Now the highlight of the culinary week is these competitions where chefs cook off against each other, kind of like Iron Chef-like, for winning prizes and basically winning. It's this super competitive, I'm better than you mentality, which <laughs> I, was, I was a huge part of. So the idea was, I was young, we're talking like 18 years old. And what would happen is the hotels would enter the young guys, the young students, in these competitions. And they had a few different categories. Well, I got addicted to these competitions. And I started doing really well. So I would win every bloody year these competitions. Not because I was good, but I would train so much for these things and I would be so ready that nobody stood a chance. So I won not because the dishes were the best, but I just wouldn't make stupid mistakes like lighting my entire kitchen on fire and burning the hell out of the chicken, right? I just didn't do it because I would practice every day till it was like a, like a Zen meister of culinary. So the last competition and the most prestigious at the end of my apprenticeship was the team category. Now the team category was tough. It was two people, you went head to head with basically the top chefs in the city. There was no age category. So I'm like 21 and you're cooking against like the executive chef of Four Seasons. It was challenging. And there was two people working together. <clears throat> you needed to create an appetizer, a main course and a dessert and the whole time period was about 90 minutes. So, we started cooking and everything was going really, 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 really well. Appetizer went out stellar, right? Main course was going out stellar. And I started to feel like we're gonna win this thing. We got a chance to win this bloody thing. And dessert came and we're cleaning up and we're reorganizing and we're just putting the final touches on this beautiful strawberry dessert. And I grab the strawberries, they're in the pot, we're just finishing, the ice cream is setting, the cracker is finally ready. I add the sugar to the beautiful sweet strawberry puree, I spoon it over the dessert, and it goes out. And it looks amazing. And I'm thinking, ooh, <clears throat> we got this. We got this. Not only was our timing spot on, but our dessert looked and it tasted perfect for sure. So it goes out and I see finally the judges gather together and they start to taste. And the judges are difficult. They're looking at timing, temperature, presentation, cleanliness, organization. I mean, you know, the big hats, you know, the little things, they're sorted. So it goes out and the first judge tries it and he immediately signals the other judges to taste it. And I'm thinking, he's getting everyone to taste it because it's super good. He's gonna, he's loving it, he's telling everybody about it. And finally, when they've all tasted it, he says, come, come you guys, try it. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, try it, I know. And he grabs a spoon and he gives it to me. And I put it in my mouth and it's salty. Our dessert is super salty. And I didn't understand how it could happen. And what happened is when we were cleaning up after the main course, instead of clearing the salt away and putting the sugar, what we did is we basically kept the salt there and just assumed it was the sugar. So we seasoned every aspect of our dessert with salt, not sugar. I mean, I was heartbroken. 
We spent months on trying to do the best we could for the competition. And that single mistake cost us the whole competition. Can you imagine we came second? Imagine how good our bloody dish was that we came second in the competition and we used only salt in the entire dessert. We got zero points for the dessert. Well, after I picked myself up from total other failure, red in the face, total disbelief, and that evening I go back to the hotel, I change, I'm really sad, I make my way home, and right when I'm at my lowest, thinking I really screwed this one up, I go to open the door of my apartment, and sitting at the bottom of the door is a little, like a little present. And I thought, this is really sweet, right? Maybe somebody uh, is giving me something or they're dropping something off or maybe is a gift, something to cheer me up. So I open up this present and it's a bag of sugar. And there's a little note from my landlord that says, next time, try this. Oh, God. So still into this day, you know the trauma that this has affected? This happened when I was 18, 19 years old, right? Still until this day, every single time I use sugar, I taste it just to make sure I don't make the mistake. So learning from those bloody mistakes, absolutely. Anyway, that's the story. Salt looks a lot like sugar and sugar looks a hell of a lot like salt.